watching the most unique automotive channel on YouTube, the Hoosier Garage. So with this car in post blast mode, I want to start repairing a lot of these areas. This one being number one. I'm going to pick this one first. I was trying to debate, what do I want to go first? Do I want to do the actual frame in the back? But I thought we'll just start in the center of the car. And this way, if I get this fixed and fix two other smaller areas here, or at least one small area, then the actual floor pan, the AMD floor panel, can go right back in. Now it's going to take a lot of work to do that, get it prepped up, sand it down, holes drilled and uh, marked out and all that kind of stuff. So it's not going to happen today. But any step you can make towards your project to get it closer to done, that's exactly what you want to do. So what we got here, and let me show you something first. You know, the, the theory is always that something rusts from the inside out. Not in all cases, unless you consider the inside the outside. If you look at this, and these were galvanized. The Chrysler liked to galvanize the inside of the rocker panels, even the undersides of them in some cases, and particular areas. Now, like on my van, a lot of the frame rails some from a certain system, they actually used it in their advertising as how they galvanized. So this is galvanized on the inside, but you notice there is literally no rust on the perimeter of where the hole is. There's a little bit right here, but that's from something else. That's from the, uh, the seat mount. It all rusted from here, and you're asking, well, why? Well, seeing as this was right here, and if you look at the relation of the car, the floor pan would rest right here and then slope down. Well, that slope, if you imagine your tire would be invisibly right there throwing dirt up and any grime that would uh, shoot up anyways would appear right there and there was probably a wedge of dirt that was not uh, willing to come out and then over time it collected held moisture and then rotted that specific part out so I guess you could say that was the inside because it was up in a gap but the inside of the rocker looks quite delicious. I wonder if we slip this in, in here, you can kind of see down the end of it. Uh, we're in good shape. So, onto the actual piece. This is as I'm looking down. I put two little dots right here, okay? That's where it will actually bend and conform to the rest of the inner rocker panel. So, I came off of it just like that, and then at the apex, the highest point of the bend that's where you want to put your mark okay and then ultimately it will fold down and fit right down in here so if you kind of look at it it's not a 90 degree bend I don't know it's you know it's just up to you what you think that is but we could just put it in our vise and this is a perfect size for the vise put it right up to where the lines match up Clamp it down and just start pushing on it. Just push it right up here and I'll show you that. And this one, it's really bending good here on this side, but this side it's wanting to kind of curve out so I can persuade it a little bit near the brake down here. Two pound hammer. give it a little bit of a uniformity across the bottom I'm pretty sure we'll have to go more but that's a good place to start right there so let's see what we so it's not bad okay so there's it's pretty flush up through here not perfectly but you see there's quite a bit of a gap up here where it spreads away from it so I'm gonna go back over there bend it just a little bit more we should be right in the neighborhood then Do the same thing, put it right back on those marks. Let's try that. Okay, so I actually went just a little too far and I kind of wonder if I did strong arm it too much. So I'm just gonna take it back in there. I'm gonna put the vise where we'll say my fingers are representing the vise. I'm just going there and just 
pinch the whole thing down where it just flattens it out just a touch. Okay, so this has been pushed in a little bit. So when you look at the plane of it up here, we're good. And really down there at the bottom, it's good. So it'll all come together pretty good. And over here, it's really nice. But what it does need is it needs to be trimmed down. So I need to take a little bit off of this edge here to shave it down with like a, uh, uh, an abrasive uh, sanding wheel. And uh, actually just take a little bit of the sides off. So we'll have a nice little gap in there. We don't want to push flush up against it because when we go to weld it, it'll want to uh, expand or contract. Depending on what uh, part of the weld it is, it cools down or whatever, it won't want to warp. So we'll have a nice gap made, fit this thing in here, and we should be ready to burn it in. All right, there's our welder, and that's fired up and ready to go because our piece is ready. Now, a couple uh, walkbacks on some things. Well, maybe not walkbacks, but just some thoughts. You notice earlier how I pointed out that up here, when I put the piece on there, it seemed like it was uh, hanging up, okay? But really, it's when this was cut out or when I was pulling the seat brace bracket off, it bent it a little bit. So I just took our hammer and you can take it in there and bring it up. Same thing here. Remember I said that it is a little different plane than the other one? Same deal. It was pushed in. So I just took my hammer, and you can't always do this. Sometimes you can do it with a small screwdriver with a hook if it's a small area. And just use that way to bring it out. So a little bit of that, massaging it basically. And we have a piece that fits just like that. So we're going to take the welder, and we're going to weld it in. All right, so something we want to remember, remember I mentioned the galvanized. Let's remember that, especially on these rocker panels. These are really the only areas you're gonna get it on these cars. And if you're gonna weld anywhere where you're directly tying it back into the galvanized, what you want to do is wear a mask because those fumes are pretty much long-term deadly, okay? Um, zinc is kind of the same way, but really you need to watch galvanized. So if you're welding on the rocker panels, and anything's original where there's the galvanized coating, wear your mask, and then wear your shield over that for your welding, okay? Just a little insert there. Of course, the decline of the dark market and the crash of cryptocurrency, the impact that we're seeing is maximal age. With you and I both old enough to remember what happened in the 70s, it was a slowly creeping. All right, so that's pretty much uh, ready to go. But while I'm here, I went ahead and just buzzed this lip off from the frame rail. This is the torsion bar cross member. This uh, right here, there's actually a small pinhole right there. You might be able to see it. But I had sprayed yellow. All these areas that are bad are yellow, just to kind of highlight for the viewer what needs done. And, uh, the magnitude. So this yellow is on here and I went ahead and just shaved it down, but this is no big deal because once you hit it here on the bear, you can kind of burn that paint out of it. So what I want to do is just go in and basically fill all of this up. It don't have to be pretty, just try to fill it up directly. Don't pile it up, but fill it up and then we can go through and smooth it back out. Um, as far as the rest of the frame, it's really good through here, up in here. And uh, I might even do a little bit there. It's a little thinner there, pitted. So I might go ahead and touch that up. And then we'll be in a pretty good spot for uh, having something done. You wanna get something done, right? This will have to get cut out later, uh, replace, because this sits on top of the frame rail, so it's just really a square piece. I'd already cut it here and lifted it up a little bit, so that's gonna be a pretty simple fix. You just uh, tie it back into this one 
and then spot weld it. Should look about like that. Okay, so phase two, like I said, just gonna go through here and I just basically filled this up with weld in the potholes and the craters that existed there. That's what we got, okay? A little bit of it ran through. That's where it was probably the thinnest, right there. And it popped it, ran through. But if you t turn your uh, your nozzle sideways and hit into the area you just put in, you can kind of build it out and it'll, it'll grab into the surrounding areas. So this area was pretty heavy here with a hole or a crater. Same thing here. And I touched these areas up. So now, all you gotta do is just take your flappy wheel and just level this back out. You're kind of milling it out like a machine shop would on a head or something. And uh, you're pretty much good to go. Okay, so with a lot of this smoothed out, at least to satisfaction, we can go on to the next little area, and that's gonna be this one. Now this one has some plug welds, spot welds, kind of a thing here, and we wanna bust those loose. Uh, worst case, since this panel is trash specifically, if it gets down to it, you can actually grind away with your uh, hard wheel. Just grind it away until you get to this and then stop. But I'm going to try to use our bits and try to do it the official way. And unfortunately, when they get this pitted, it's kind of hard to, to locate where some of the plug welds are. Right here is probably a good guess of where one of them is. It dips down and you have kind of a little uh, impression that's about... Uh, three eighths of an inch in diameter. Same thing here. You kind of have same thing there. I've highlighted it with a, a blue marker. Uh, this is really rough here and I'm just guessing this one's already been broke loose if there was one there at all. And I'm going to try about there. So uh, we're going to go that way first. If I can't get anywhere with it then it's just going to have to come off all in one you know big bunch of. Okay so we went through this one and you start to see rust some powdery rust from this piece and this piece where they joined together where moisture could have gotten in there. And you start seeing it kind of spilling out through your, your drill, okay? So did that and just went just a touch further. And then the same thing here and here. Now, like I said, this one's kind of a mess here. It looks like it's more of a, uh, like a bead weld right there. But we're gonna see if we can break the rest of it away and then it'll allow us to see if we could just knock the other one loose. So I'll just put it right under this lip here where the edge of the piece is. Okay, so I had to do combination, like I kind of predicted, was a little bit of the spot weld drill. Kind of takes out most of the spot weld. And then anything that's wanting to tear away, you just trim it out with the cutting wheel. So here's what's left of it. I peeled it back and there's just this section here. Pretty much this here and then you just dress it out like we'll have to do here. Actually all four corners are going to need dressing just to not take any of the frame rail away. So you got these U-cuts. These are part of it. These are natural. These, that's why they had that piece there to help bridge that and strengthen it up. But we'll just have to smooth that down until it's good. This here needs to be done with here, so. All right, we're doing pretty good here. And, uh, well, one little area I uh, I want to address. It could be done afterwards, but I'm deciding to do it now because it could pose a problem. If you look right here where this uh, homemade subframe connector is, I got a little yellow splotch of paint here, and there's a hole right here. Well, you're thinking, well, what is that? And it's part of this boxing in right here. It must have got some moisture in there, may have come through this hole and just got in there and clogged that seam up real good. So now you have a, a lap joint that is uh, problematic. And uh, 
Not that this is a huge deal, but it is nice to have it back to the way it should be. It's gonna be just as strong if you fix it, okay, as it should have been. So I can actually repair this more so from the outside. I'm gonna cut a slot. So you can repair this more so from the outside. So I'm gonna cut basically a little rectangular slot and it's gonna eliminate a lot of this back here. So if I can clear some of this with just the grinder, you can make maybe a new piece here and then definitely make a new piece here. So I'm just gonna, like I said, cut a little slot out and we're gonna repair that. So here's the floor pan that I got from AMD several months ago. There was kind of a deal with it, but we won't go into that now. But uh, it's here, it's good shape. Um, so really, what I need to do is slip it inside of there, and this would be the front of it. Here's a, if you had the floor shifter, this is where the pivot bracket and shaft goes through the floor. So the transmission, this is the tunnel floor. And your cross member for your torsion bar, it goes, eh, let's see. Man, I think about right here, right through this blank area. So what you do is you put this in there and then you score around it, leave a little mark. And you know that's right inside of that about quarter of an inch, three eighths of an inch up to a half. That's where your, your dotted line, basically your holes for your plug welds will be. Okay. And that way when you lay it back in there, the holes will be in the panel and then you just weld it to the floor after you press it down a bit. Uh, use tech screws, uh, self-tapping screws, stuff like that to pinch it down to the floor and then keeps that gap from being present. It's down nice and flush. And then you take the screws out and weld those up again. You only put those in select spaces. But I need to get this thing up in. And the best way to do it, I think, uh, it doesn't go in so much from the side. You have to put in the front of it or the back first and then rotate it and go in and that's what you know obviously the windows are out but the window on the side has to be out in the back and then it still isn't enough for just the floor pan to go in like a like a pizza oven All right, so you saw me get that in there. Not the easiest thing in the world to do, but it's doable, even at this height. But uh, for the most part, it is where it needs to be. Um, a lot of this will come together, but that needs to be, this part of it, the flange here where it's kind of interrupting there, it needs to be brought back a little bit. And then a lot of this will fit as it should. But that's mostly at this angle where the flap goes up. Down here, though, we're in pretty good shape. The overlap back, back here is where it should be, to where you leaves you a couple little places to notch out with the ribbing. And uh, good all the way across there. It's setting on top of the rocker panel rail. Pretty good. It does set up a little bit, but that is because of the homemade subframe connectors they put in. It's touching there, so I'm going to have to. I might just go ahead and cut it right there and then cut it back here just to separate. You see it's really nasty looking weld anyways. But if we get down under here and kind of see what's going on. A little area there where he didn't get with the sandblaster, but that's okay. We'll uh, clean that up. 
but the rest of this though pretty much where it needs to be um so let's take this little snap-on tool just a little scriber type deal and scribe you right up against it okay all around just do a silhouette of the whole frame rail both sides Count for any notching that might be in it, like right here. And then just go throughout this frame rail, that one, that one, up until it separates from the body. And then this is where your rear floor pan, describe it along there. And uh, that's pretty much it. You can also scribe around, you know, we have the one area that we fixed earlier in the video. We'll want to put that up there and you could scribe around these. You can even scribe the holes if you want. And uh, just give you kind of a, a context where it is because there'll be a spot weld here and there'll be one up there. And possibly even one back there. So three on each of the brackets. And, uh, so once you pull it back out, you'll have all this available. You can see where it goes. And then every two inches, you put your spot weld holes. You'll be good to go. Okay, so I've taken quite a bit of time since the last scene, I guess you could say. So, all right, you've got the panel in here. I've made all my scribes underneath it. And since it's in here and it's kind of stable, I went ahead and drilled my pilot holes now these holes will end up being about three eighths of an inch diameter right now they're about eighth of an inch they're just the pilot holes every two inches and that's going to be for the spot welds this will be the part obviously that sets on top of the rocker panel there's a little lip that comes out that we like we made earlier you can kind of see the edge of it and this sets on top of it and ultimately pins it down and then it welds to that so i did all the way from here like I said, two inches apart all the way around. Went ahead and did it up here. All the way down that side. And then went ahead and lined this up where it needs to go. I'm going to weld it once I get it back, get this panel out. That's going to weld up. I made some marks to make sure it all fit up inside of here good. I went ahead and drilled the holes out of the panel here because it will be a bench seat car again. So these are the bench seat rails if you have a bucket seat again they will use these these reinforcement panels which you don't have these on a bench seat car but they include it on these floor pans in case you do have a bucket seat then you drill out the dimples and there will be some dimples down here as well and that's what the holes here signify see there's the bench seat hole there's the bucket seat hole so if you drill that one out then you'll have your reinforcement for the buckets but like i said bench seat these two here and those two over there. I also made our pilot holes for the bracket. So this floor will weld to that bracket and beef that up. Same thing here and here. Did it over there too, okay? Now, when we take this out and we're gonna scribe there, then this panel will pretty much along here will get drilled. In this case, since there's a the panels there and it's hard to you know line it up with the edge when i'm getting rid of these edges like that where it's kind of mysterious that's why we scribe it so we can scribe it pull it out come off of it about this far and then we will drill two inches all the way across there same thing there and then you'll do the same thing on this blank spot here that's where your cross uh, member is for the torsion bars okay the only ones that'll really be left and i'm debating on where to do those um you have this panel here see this panel like part of your firewall cowl area there's your spot weld that went up to the original floor so i might drill these back out pinch the floor and this piece together and then weld it and then it might end up doing the same thing here because you have to continue around and then we make our piece here because it's missing right now obviously we'll make it to spec there so these are probably get drilled back out 
I could drill out the floor portion and I might still do that, but you're welding from underneath there and it's just, it's just kind of difficult. If you can get out here and just weld it, you'd be good. So it might be a little more difficult in a way to get these drilled since they've already been welded before and to, to drill those out. But that's, you know, we'll worry about that later on. And uh, yeah, so got a buddy, he's gonna come over and help me pick this back out because it was one thing to put it in there, but get it back out, it's, you're fighting it over top of this stuff as opposed to letting it drop. Next time on the Hoosier Garage. Yeah, so next time on the Hoosier Garage, we're gonna have the pan welded in. First, we're gonna have some weldable primer. We're gonna have to include that into the whole storyline here and make sure everything is finished out. Everything's dressed up, ready to go, sealed up and ready for that pan to drop in here. But then we'll also have to go over to the pan. Yes, the floor pan. So we wanna get all the holes drilled for the cross member, frame rails, rockers, all the torque boxes, that kind of stuff there. And then after that, we also wanna get our seat belt anchors put in here. That's why I got pieces taped just to remind me that those need to be put in. The holes are already there. And then we'll go through and scuff this down really good, maybe with a 120 grit paper and just go over it really, really good. So that way that when we go put it in there, it'll be ready to just prime and paint. We don't have to try to sand it while we're upside down. So that's what's coming up next time on the Hoosier Garage. Make sure you like and subscribe if you haven't already. This is gonna be a big project and I want you to come along and enjoy what we got going on. Hopefully it'll help you out, so. Thank you for watching the Hoosier Garage. Please be sure to like and subscribe for more restoration, tips, and fun.